is to be different at Edison. So there is different gender identities, there's different languages, there's different racial makeups, there's different, different economic uh, makeups of students. I'm an autism case manager at Edison High School in Minneapolis. I oversee um, currently 12 students. I help them navigate <laughs> the high school life. That includes their social skills, their academic skills. I think the most thing my kids are missing is just that human connection of being together in the in the classroom. I think there's some that are struggling just emotionally with it a little bit more, but know that like this is the safest way to do it too, but to just miss the the connection more than others. If I had my choice given what, you know, how the, the virus is going right now, um, as far as having kids in class or not in class. I mean, we had that debate back in November of, you know, we're going to have this targeted support and bring certain groups of kids back in. And if we get to a point to be able to do that, to target certain kids that are seriously struggling in this kind of situation, like I'm in favor of that. I'm not in favor yet until it is, you know, deemed truly safe. Like when, you know, we've all been vaccinated or something to bring everybody in full in person. I think the, the detriment to bringing kids in and then if the virus gets worse or there's a case and then we all have to go back home and be back in distance learning, I think that would be devastating to kids. I just think that chaos of the change would be worse than just staying in distance learning. So on very, very short notice, we whipped out a back to school campaign. We're still fighting that battle. Schools are, are still wavering, uh, even though we're well into September, on what exactly they're gonna be doing this year. Dr. Marcia Wyatt. I am a second grade educator at Elizabeth Hall um, International Elementary School in North Minneapolis. I've been with the Minneapolis Public Schools for 25 plus years. There's a level of anxiety with the reopening of schools um, because of, it's a safety issue. Um, as a person of color in a community that is um, hit heavily, um, both in cases and loss of life, um, along with other um, people of color. There's a concern that I have, um, also knowing that even though I will be working with the students that have continued with distance learning, that I am required by the district to be in person in the building where there will be other students and other staff members. So safety is a, a huge concern. It's Monday, February 1st. I'm sitting in the parking lot of my school. And I'm here because we're going to be in the building for the first time um, as a staff since uh, last March, since the pandemic started. And um, I guess we're practicing for the transition for students being back in the building. It's not safe. We're still in a pandemic. Um, teachers are asking a pretty simple thing which is, can you just wait until we get vaccinated since many of us are in a very high risk category? Of course, we're thinking about um, students and their safety and them you know, possibly bringing the coronavirus back home to their family, their communities. We know that this virus has hit hardest in black, indigenous, and people of color communities.
I just, I don't, I don't understand what I'm doing here right now in the parking lot, you know, getting ready for school to continue in the building. We're not there yet, folks. I want to be back in there in, in a safe way. And this is not it. Now is not the time. Do you actually care about your students, their families, your teachers, your administration, your administrators? Like, do you actually care about us? Because if you do, I'm not seeing it. If you do, show me. Show me that you care. Show me that it's worth putting my life on the line, my family's life on the line, my students' lives on the line, their families' lives on the line. For what? I'm struggling at this current moment um, with policy and policymakers. Um, and my struggle is, is that most of them don't understand what teachers go through every day. Um, I don't know how many of them have ever been in a classroom as a teacher to know um, the things that we deal with the things that our students bring with them, the interactions that we have with family. I went around to every kid's house, um, you know, outside, masked up, and gave them a copy, a, a physical copy of the schedule. So I could sit down with them and explain the schedule. And the student, he'd say like, I don't know what day I'm supposed to do. So then I created a video to show him. And I mean, it took, a couple of months of all these different strategies and meeting with his parents and meeting with his therapist. And when I looked at grades recently, I don't know what clicked, but he started showing up regularly. And I said, I am so fear. I'm gonna start crying. <laughs> I'm so fiercely proud of where you were at the beginning of the year and, and how you're doing now. <laughs> well, I've cried about that because he has severe depression and he's not medicated. And he was so surprised to hear that. And I said, your grades and what you're doing right now is like the top third of my class right now. I said, you have figured this out. You are powering through. You're stronger than you realize. And that one is just amazing to me because I thought, oh, my God, I'm going to lose this kid. And he's doing it. Somehow he's doing it. You know, it, and I tell the kids, I, you know, when the kids are complaining about it, I'm like, we all agree this sucks. <laughs> like, I'm not going to play like this is the way we like doing this. You know, it's difficult. This has not been good for anyone. We want our students in building. We want to hug them. We want to let them know that. We care about them and we love them. And we do that even in the distance learning, but it just looks differently when it's in person. And I understand that parents who are sending their children back to school, you want them out of the house. They've been in there locked up. But we want you to be mindful of, especially if you are in a community of color, that your children, that the teachers that they have that are teachers of color, we are at greater risk if we contract COVID. It is either life or it's death. I would say to um, parents, please have a conversation with your child's teacher um, and ask them how this is affecting them. Please know that your child's teacher did not make this decision to have your child return back to school because each one of us wants them to be safe. We want you to be safe. And most importantly, we want to be safe for our own families. And to those who are making these decisions, please listen to the individuals who have to show up every day, now back in a building, wearing a mask, wearing gowns and gloves, doing the amount of cleaning that has to be done. Is distance learning perfect? No, but death should not be an option.
for anyone that is involved in education.